Jump! Jets. Jump! Jump with all your might! Jets. We didn't make it, and he crushed our boy. Ugh, what a mess. Oh. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another Peg City Hockey screams for 10 minutes about how the Jets are doing the exact same thing wrong in every single game that they're losing and yet refuse to change anything because if you haven't already been paying attention, I've been making the exact same video just longer and sometimes a little bit more rage induced every time and time again so far because I am absolutely I'm done with this. I, I I have become the definition of insanity. No longer is Paul Maurice the definition of insanity. I am the definition of insanity because I'm watching the Jets expecting different results. Well, I know for a fact that that is not going to be happening. This is an absolute joke. If I really wanted to, I could stop this video right now. It could be under a minute, and this is exactly all my thoughts you need to know about this game is that this is this team is a joke. Nothing is going to change, and yeah, embrace the suck at this point. This team is not going anywhere. Embrace the tank, even though there's no point in tanking, because we're actually going to the playoffs, which is even the worst thing about this. It's not like we can actually have hopeful that maybe in the last, you know, three weeks of the season, four weeks of the season, maybe last month, we can actually tank and lose out of the playoffs and maybe somehow get rewarded for being so bad and getting some lucky odds or whatnot. We've won a lottery in the past, right? Doesn't matter because now we have to go and get swept by any team in the North Division this year. Because let's be real, we're not beating any of the teams in the North Divisions. We're not beating the Habs, we're not beating the Leafs, and we're not beating the Oilers. And I don't care about which team we match you better against and how the Oilers would beat us and all that because honestly right now I'm being serious looking at this team the last 10 games they've lost 9 of 10 this team is not going anywhere they're not succeeding anywhere because look at this team look at everything that's wrong with them and tell me how this team is going to just all of a sudden show up and be good again because don't give me the fact that oh the Jets were the leading shots so they gave the most shots tonight on net I don't want to hear any of that crap at all none of it I don't care if the Canucks had 31 shots and the Jets had 40 I don't care if the Jets had a 65% face off percentage tonight I don't care if they out hit the Canucks I don't care about any of that stuff you want to know why because when it came down to it none of that matters because the Jets can't score goals at all they suck at scoring goals like I'm being serious when I say that like other than that Kyle Connor goal which was off of a really good feed from Mark Schleifley off a really good play that was it and that was a kind of a line juggling play because Matthew Perot is supposed to be on the second line Schleifley is obviously the top line center and Connor is also like you know what I mean he's on that top line so it's like oh what's going on there why is it happening and it worked out it was just a lucky play it's not even our top six and a normal line producing it's just Matthew Perot jumping in and making Kyle Connor and Schleifley look good on a play in my opinion in there doesn't change the fact that the Jets just had no offense throughout this entire game like you go and you look at the just everything that they did and there's there's a void Blake Wheeler is a void offensively there's nothing there I don't care and I'm not saying he's a bad player but you have to understand the fact that a guy with his age getting older is going to eventually decline and Blake Wheeler has declined he's 34 years old he's not the guy with the same wheels he's not the same type of player he was three four years ago now even three two years ago he's already getting older you know what I mean he's taking injuries this year as well he says he's healthy that doesn't matter if he's healthy if he's already declining the point being is that he is best suited for a role outside the top six he slows down everyone in the top six I've said this before and tons of other people have said this before Blake Wheeler is a very useful skilled player still and you have to use him correctly when players get older you don't have to keep forcing them to be something they're not you have to learn how to adapt and find their strengths and play them to it that's what all the greats do that's why they have such long careers and if Blake Wheeler is a great and he isn't just a guy that had some great seasons on a really good team and whatnot which I know he isn't then why can't you just use him properly why can't Blake Wheeler accept a smaller role why can't Paul freaking Paul Maurice they, they change his top six and move it around how many times do we have to see Kyle Connor and Mark Schleifley and Blake Wheeler go up against opponents and be outmatched all the time like Niles Hoglander is just been the owner of the Jets this year when the Canucks have played at times. He's been, without a doubt, he's probably been the, one of our best uh, matchups against him has been against the Jets, if you're a Hoglander. He's just, like, think about it, going back to all the Forbert stuff, him standing up for himself, all that stuff went down, and all that all that jazz that really messed up Forbert's game. And then you have tonight's game where he sleep for, opens the scoring and closes the scoring. It's just, 
it's it's just frustrating because it's not like the Canucks have top line players right now. They're losing eight players. Their top players tonight were like they don't even have Pedersen. Their defense is makeshift of the AHL basically, and their top prospects. Same with their bottom six. They're missing none of their regulars up the bottom. Like it is just a hodgepodge of different AHL guys from Utica and the Canucks and their prospects. There's nothing consistent about this team. They know they're not going to the playoffs. They've had a really disappointing year, and yet they come out and have more energy and play with more to lose than what you do. And you are a team trying to snap a losing streak. You've lost. 9 of 10 and you're trying to go to the playoffs positively and you can't do anything right in that regard that's just sad like there's nothing else to even say about that it's not about coaching at this point and I haven't even touched upon the fact that a lot of fans were harking on Ville Hinola and I've seen how all the Ville Hinola experiments already dead and all this yeah so what a 19 year old defenseman made a rookie mistake on the blue line did something that works in the minors that doesn't work in the NHL he learned from that and he had a pretty good game in my opinion nonetheless in 18 minutes of time on the ice that's his probably his, I think his highest game of the ice uh, time on ice, excuse me, and, I, and that's pretty good. I thought he had a good game, even though it was a minus one. And that was a bad play that he gave up. I thought that he drove the play well. He just he looked very good at times, and I I really liked his game personally, offensively as well. And minus, excuse me, uh, he actually played 19 minutes, not 18. I read Dylan Vanello by accident, but still, that point being, he had a good game minus that bad play. I know he was a minus two, but that doesn't really reflect on him because that second goal that Derek Forbert and Billy Hanola were on for. That was mostly Derek Forber being out of positioning and then bad bouncing around the net that resulted in a really good scoring opportunity because everyone was kind of out of position because of bad puck luck and just a bad you know uh, defensive positioning that he Forbert made when the rush really start, broke into the zone, and other than that you know Villanova has a good game and then he gets hated on by some fans I see and it's like come on you gotta be kidding me. And, like, Laura Marsois as well, what I get to talk about negatives, like, that first goal where Hoglander scored, you know, like, he could have had more of that. It wasn't a great first opportunity by Hoglander. It was a better second opportunity to put the puck in after the initial save that he made and after the loose rebound, I thought, than the first shot he made on net. So I, I think Roland Brassois could have had that. Maybe it was a closer game. But again, here's the thing that I'm trying to harken back to in all of this is that I could say all these maybes and if and what I thought was okay and all this, but does it really matter when the team just can't score and the offense is a black hole? Like, think about it. We have Pierre-Luc Dubois, Paul Stastny, Blake Wheeler, Mark Scheifele, Kyle Connor. If we had Nikolai Ehlers, you know, obviously there's a difference. He's a huge but dynamic part of this team. But still, Matthew Perot, Mason Appleton, who's supposed to be a good goal scorer, now can't finish anything. Adam Lowry, a guy who can, who can who's got pretty good offensive instincts. We've seen it recently. And you're telling me none of these guys can score? Like, it's just sad. And not to mention the fact that the Jets are just ro rolling out the bottom four. It's just so frustrating at this point. Look at the Moose. The Moose are thriving right now. They have a great... They're playing with nothing to lose. They're having fun. They're all playing good hockey. I would much rather see at this point in the season a guy like Nate Thompson who's played every game of the season sit him out and bring in someone from the Moose. You know why? Because you're losing 9 out of 10. You've been horrible for a long time now. It's not just your roster. There's nothing solid tweaks you can make. But just throw shit out and see if you can inspire the players. If I'm the, if I'm Mark Shifley and I see a guy coming in from the Moose, a career AHL, for example, not even a prospect guy, someone who's just been having a good year down there, a Nathan Todd type player. I don't think exactly we can bring up Nathan Todd, but the point being, this guy like that, bring him up and have him kind of motivate the guys. Have him come up, be hungry, maybe score. Who knows what that does to the locker room? Maybe it gets the guys jealous and they get hungry and realize that this guy can score and play like this. Why can't I? I don't know. Experiment. Do things. At this point, you have to do something you, instead of just sending out the same shit offensively. And it's getting to the point where the defensive pairings looked, in my opinion, pretty good going into this game, even though they weren't the greatest but it's still like I, I like that there's been defensive change lately I think that's important even though it hasn't really stuck yet I still think it's important to try to make things to fix things up and you know rotate them around down there but that being said you can't do that and not do that to the offense as well when your offense has been a black hole for a long time now it's not like the Jets have been very good over the last 10 games either scoring goals they haven't they haven't been able to score goals over this losing streak that's why they've lost games a lot of the time and I know you might be thinking oh that's obvious but sometimes in a losing streak you lose close games you lose games that are 4-3, back and forth, stuff like that. The Jets haven't really lost a lot of games like that because they've just not been able to score goals, maintain leads, and play a good, complete, all the, all the way through game, you know? First, second, and third, from puck drop to the end of the game. They don't, they can't do it. They can't show up all the way. And it's path pathetic, and it just shows. And, like, it doesn't matter the fact that you're trying to play lower bus. Well, like, all these things, it does nothing matters because most likely, unless the offense is drastically changed or something happens with the offense, or like, it's getting to the point where you have to really look at everything and be like, do you have to shake it up? Do you have to move a guy? Like, I, I don't know who you would move even out of this core when you look at the contracts, but you have to consider something, right? Like, I know it might seem dramatic, drastic now, but think about this. 
we've choked so hard and we've never been good we haven't been never not excuse me we've been good but we haven't been good for the last three years now we're most likely going to be eliminated three years in a row in the first round so what we're making the playoffs i'd rather be missing the playoffs and getting draft picks and building up the cabinet again or making trip hate trades or doing something rather than just making the first round and losing it or having a close contested game like the series against the st louis for example where the jets shouldn't have really won it but you felt like they could have and then have them lose in the fashion they did do you really want those type of series over and over again do you want the jets to just become the legacy of suck do you want that to be our definition? Do you want the Jets just to bathe in mediocrity, or do you want us to excel and push past getting a just push past just getting to a Western Conference final, make a Cup final, even if you lose it, may you become the first Winnipeg Jets incarnation of an NHL team ever to make a final, do something, push, bring a hockey championship to Winnipeg that is more meaningful than what we've seen since the Advo Advo Cup. Like, like seriously, you gotta you gotta do something. And there's, I just don't have any faith in this team and the coaching and nothing. There's, there's nothing that I've seen that has justified them in snapping a losing streak. I expect them to lose every game left in the season, and I don't expect them to win in the playoffs. I, and I know you might be thinking that that sounds harsh, but at this point, why? I watch every game, I cover every game, I live stream this game, I'm talking to you Jets fans, and it's all the same shit from everybody, yet the coaching staff and the franchise don't seem to give a shit. And you can't be thinking, oh, you don't fire a coach this far in. You're right, maybe you don't fire him now with three games left, but you definitely could have fired him during the losing streak when he was wor warranted of that. You could have fired him any time during the season when we've just been mediocre and not being able to excel, especially when you look back to those games against Toronto and meaningful games where we could have jumped up in the standings and it just showed that we were not a top-tier team in this division. There's been so many times where you could fire Paul Maurice and have it be justified, yet they choose not to. You choose not to do anything to change the direction of this club, and you bathe in mediocrity as an organization. And that's why you're not going anywhere. It's as simple as that. Until this team does something drastic, or they find a way to really motivate themselves in some way that they haven't been able to yet, I don't see anything changing. And even then, that's a big if, because this offense is just dry bone. Like it's a dry spell right now. Like it's they're, The whole team basically is snake-bitten. And, it's, and let's be real, the Jets haven't been a good 5-on-5 five -five team for a long time now when it comes to scoring. And now that their power play has been god-awful as well for as long as it's been, like, come on, you expect them to really succeed? This team can't score goals on 5-on-5 five -five even strength in the past, and now without a failed power play, they can't score at all, and it shows. It shows that even even their power play, again, going touching on that, it's asinine. Blake Wheeler doesn't even have an opera, a shooting lane most of the time where he's on the power play. They spend a minute and a half, usually a minute and 30 seconds or more than that on the first unit that sucks, that can't get generate anything. And then they give the second unit 30 seconds max, 40 seconds max, it feels like. And it's like, oh, great. Let's see how much you can do with that. I know that's the norm, but when your second power play is as better as it is, why don't you just use your second power play first and then have your, like, you know what I mean? Like, I just don't understand the coaching decisions. It doesn't make any sense to me. It's like Paul Maurice just really does not see any problems with this roster, and he's like, we're going to win. We're just having a dry spill, and I think that that's acidine because there's so many ad like obvious holes within this team and the way you're coached, the way you're run, the way your lineup's designed, and why you're losing, and yet you refuse to do anything to change it, and it just drives me absolutely crazy. And I don't see anything changing, and that's the sad thing. And I'm gonna leave this video here. I'm gonna leave it that with that because I think you guys should let me know all your thoughts down as usual because I think this is a very, you know, moment, very like, it's the tipping scale of this franchise right now at this moment within the fan base. Three years of mediocrity so far since an epic run. Nothing's changing. It really looks like the coaching's only getting worse. The decisions are only being worse. Let me know all your thoughts down in the comment section below. What direction you want this club to take going forward right now? If you were the GM, what would you do immediately? Let me know all your thoughts down in the comment section below. As always, if you're a fan of hockey, but more importantly, a fan of the Winnipeg Jets or any team, regardless of who you root for, definitely consider dropping a subscription. As always, as it really does help this channel grow, support it, and whatnot. And also, as we are on that road to 1K subscribers, having any support you can give in the form of a subscription is always greatly appreciated. With all that being said, follow my socials down in the description below. Make sure to follow the Perry Puck podcast on Spotify as well. Weekly episodes coming out every Friday, so go check stay tuned for that when they come out on Friday at 9 p.m. Central Time. With all that being said, I, 9 p 9 a.m. Excuse me. <laughs> Point being, all that being said, I'm gonna end the video here. Peace, love, and positivity as always. I will see you guys in the next video. I sure as hell ain't saying it. You guys know it. They don't deserve it. And I will see you in the next one. Peace, love, and positivity, and all that jazz. Bye bye.